Hi, thanks for joining me today. This is Midnight Cry with Deborah, and it's June 19th, 2021. And if you look down under this video and you don't see Midnight Cry with Deborah, you're not on my channel. But if you'll go to my channel by putting in the search line in YouTube, Midnight Cry with Deborah, I'll pop up, lo and behold, and you will see that you can subscribe there, click the bell, then you'll be notified every time I put out a video. So, it's a beautiful day, partly cloudy, mostly cloudy so far, the sun's trying to come out here in Central Florida, and um, I just want you to know that Jesus is still on the throne. Father God's on the throne. And I thank you, Lord, that you are here right now. The Lord got me up, Father God. He got me up this morning. And it was early. About, well, I first woke up about four. And I tried to convince him that it was okay if I stayed in bed a little longer. So I got up at 4.30 because I had gone to bed at 12.30 after being at Donna Rigney's prayer service over in Bunnell, Florida, which is at Friday nights at 6 o'clock at Church on the Rock. And um, I just, um, I felt like I needed some more sleep and the Lord spoke to me and he said, trust me, just trust me with the lack of sleep and you'll be strengthened. You'll be energized. God is so good. You know, he's wanting to move me into a new place in Him. I'm getting ready to go on the road with Michael, and we're going to see a lot of you, we hope. Uh, right now, our first tour is just going to be uh, up through Alabama and into Tennessee and Kentucky and all the way up to Michigan. Uh, and then we plan to go across over to Massachusetts. Don't know if we're going to stop in New York and Pennsylvania on the way, but uh, and then come back home down the eastern seaboard. So we're getting ready to do that. And um, I just ask you for your prayers. And many of you have asked, how am I going to know where you are? Well, we have a wonderful man named Dave who is doing a... Um, website for me and so we're hoping we can at least get it up and running it won't be fancy it's probably going to be very stripped down in the beginning but the main thing is that we will be able to put our itinerary on it so far we haven't even got the first place nailed down <laughs> and I know my dear brother in Destin is waiting for that and you need to contact me again because I've lost your phone number I think I have it in a book but I we have been so busy, I'm so sorry, I haven't even had a chance to call you. But we're hoping to be doing that by the first weekend in July. So, um, we put our trailer up for sale, but so far it hasn't sold. We have a couple very interested, and they're supposed to contact us on Monday. But you know what? We've just said, Lord, if it doesn't sell, we're going to batten down the hatches in case there's a storm. And we're going to just go. So pray for us. I thank you so much for all of you that have written. I thank you. And, and many of you are asking me now, how are we going to know? Where are we going to find you? And how you're going to know is that we're going to at least tell you on the videos. Okay. And, and many of you have said, can I, uh, where do I need to, to write? And you just keep on sending it to P.O. Box 724 in Bellevue. And that's below down here. And, uh, uh, it will it will be forwarded to us we're having our mail forwarded so we may uh go over to ormond beach and get if if our trailer sells tomorrow we will for sure get a place a p.o box in ormond beach which is where we believe that the lord wants us to live when we come back home if our trailer sells so i don't know that yet um anyway so i just want to share those things with you You'll be able to find out on the videos where we are, and hopefully we will have the itinerary up at least a couple of weeks at a, in advance uh, of where we're going. 
so that those of you who are in that state or very near that location will be able to come to the meetings. I want to say we're not worried about a crowd. We want the people that God sends there to be there because we know that that's what it's all about. If you're wondering about my hair, it's blowing in my fan. <laughs> it is not breezy out here. Uh, it's 84, and by the time I get done, it's supposed to be 88. I love my porch, but I'm ready to let it go if God says let it go. I know, y'all are going to miss the live oak tree. I'm so sorry. It's not a thing I can do about it. But you know what? We're believing that God's going to give us something just as beautiful, and I promise I will take my wind chimes with me. Now, I know some of you don't like them, but you're in luck today. I don't believe in luck, but anyway, the wind's not blowing, so the wind chimes aren't chiming. <laughs> Some of you have said, we don't like the wind chimes. Oh, but you're outnumbered. I hate to tell you, there's a whole bunch of you that love the wind chimes. <laughs> you know what? I found out a long time ago, you can't please anybody and or everybody. And so there's only one person I have to please, and that's Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord got me up this morning, and I finally got out of bed about 4.34, and I took my notebook and I, my Bible, and I went out front, and I sat in the dark, and I wrote this all down in the dark, and so if I stumble, please forgive me. It's because I wrote it in the dark, um, but this is what it says, and it's a word from the Lord to his people he loves so much. 6-19-2021 Do not listen anymore to the old thoughts that have come into your mind for many years of what seemed like failure. Thoughts of feeling unloved, unworthy, unanointed. Thoughts that say you have not prayed enough or read your Bible enough or done enough. Tell my people I am in love with them. <laughs> I do not look at their lack. I do not see their failures the way they see them. I am Lord of all, and I see them through the eyes of acceptance and love, the likes of which only those lost in me have ever known. Tell my remnant and tell those whom the enemy has ravaged. I have cleansed their spirits when they gave their lives to me, when they asked me to save their soul. I have given them new hearts. They have one heart to love and adore me. They are just beginning to discover they all have my heart and they are being drawn together to me and to one another. I'm going to say that again. They have one heart to love and adore me. They are just beginning to discover they all have my heart and they are being drawn together to me and to one another. They have tasted me and seen that I am good. Now, they are on the verge of discovering that about each other. Listen no more to condemnation. When they refuse him, that's the spirit of condemnation, that is the devil. He's the accuser of the brethren. He's the one that contemns, condemns you before God day and night. Listen no more to condemnation when they refuse him and move from that place into the place of thinking my thoughts, my plans, and embrace my peace and my love. They will suddenly discover an authority to rule every area in their lives that the enemy has usurped. I am the Lord, and I rule over all. There is nothing I do not rule over or have power over. Hallelujah. I have determined this is the time 
for my people to arise. Oop, there goes the wind chimes. <laughs> the real breeze has just picked up. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I think it's the wind of his spirit. Ah, God's so good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, 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 Lord. Pour your spirit out on your people. Right now, Lord. Refresh them in the gentle breeze of your spirit. I'm going to say it again. Because the anointing came on it. That's why. I have determined this is the time for my people to arise. Many have played the broken recording of feelings of being unloved, unneeded, I can't hardly read my writing, and unappreciated for years. Listen again. Many have played the broken recording of the feelings of unloved, being unloved, unneeded, and unappreciated for years. But I tell them to play it no longer. Sadness, loneliness, heaviness, and despair has broken their hearts and cluttered their minds. I am the healer, says the Lord. Come now, even this very moment. My presence is here with you. Hallelujah. Right now. Everything you need is in my presence. I healed your spirit, man, long ago. Let me now heal your broken mind, your broken heart, your emotions, your mind, your will have been manipulated, controlled, and intimidated long enough. I am the Word of God and set my people free of every being in the earth, under the earth, and above the earth that usurps my mind, my will, and my feelings within you. I tell you that it stops now. Rise up, my beloved. Come with me, says the Lord your God. Be not afraid. I will not lead you down a crooked path. I am about to make a new super highway for my people. There will be no unclean thing there. No stumbling stone will be there. No evil beast will be found there. No longer will my people bite and devour one another. Those that do this to you are not of me. Be done with their accusations. Listen no more. Let them chew up one another, but not my bride, not my remnant, says the Lord your God, your beloved. I am jealous over you. Tell my love, my turtle dove, I am about to deliver thee. And I'm sitting there wondering, Lord, what is it that you're trying to say? What is it that I can look at in the Word of God that speaks to this? And I was amazed. He answered me immediately. And he said, Go look at the story of Nabal and Abigail. So I looked it up, and I found it. And the Lord told me, I want you to read them that story. It's going to take a couple of minutes. But I know 
you'd rather hear this whole story instead of being confused about where we're at. So I'm going to mark my place right here. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 25. Starting in verse 2. Now there was a man in Maon whose business was in Carmel, and the man was very rich. He had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. The name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and beautiful appearance, but the man was harsh and evil in his doings. Did you get that? Harsh and evil in his doings. Some of you are married to a woman like that. Some of you are married to a man like that. Some of you are in a church with a pastor like that. Okay, listen up. He was shearing his sheep in Carmel. The name of the man was Nabal, the name of his wife Abigail, and she was a woman of good understanding and beautiful appearance. But the man was harsh and evil in his doings. He was of the house of Caleb. When David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep, David sent ten young men, and David said to the young men, Go up to Carmel. Go to Nabal and greet him in my name. And this is before, this is when the years of David already having been anointed king, but running from King Saul because King Saul was jealous of him and wanted to destroy him. The anointing of God had already departed from Saul and was on King David, who wasn't yet king. And all of Israel knew he was supposed to be king. He said, go up to Carmel to his men, his ten young men, go to Carmel and go to Nabal and greet him in my name. And thus you, you shall say to him who lives in prosperity, Peace be to you, peace to your house, and peace to all that you have. Now I have heard that you have shearers. Your shepherds were with us, and we did not hurt them, nor was there anything missing from them all the while they were in Carmel. Ask your young men, and they will tell you, Therefore let my young men find favor in your eyes, for we come on a feast day. Please give whatever comes to your hand to your servants and to your son David. So when David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all these words in the name of David, and they waited. Then Nabal answered David's servants. I'm reading from the New King James in case you're interested. Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? It's very arrogant. There are many servants nowadays who break away each one from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my shearers and give it to men when I do not know where they are from? This was all a lie because everybody knew. So David's young men turned on their heels and went back. They came and they told him all these words. And then David said to his men, Every man gird on his sword. And David also girded on his sword. And about 400 men went with David and 200 stayed with the supplies. Now one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Look. David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master, and he reviled them. That's something else these kind of people do. They're revilers. You say, well, I don't know exactly what that means. It means scorn. They scorn. They mock. They're revilers. But the men were very good to us, and we were not hurt, nor did we miss anything as long as, as we accompanied them when we were in the fields. And that was something that was a real problem in those days because marauders would come, Bedouins, they would come and they would steal sheep and steal camels, steal donkeys and kill servants. They were a wall to us, both by day, by night and by day, and all the time we were with them keeping the sheep. Now, therefore, 
know and consider what you will do for harm is determined against our master and against all his household for he is such a scoundrel that one cannot speak to him this is Nabal's own servant saying this to his wife Abigail then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves of bread two skins of wine, five sheep already dressed, five seas of roasted grain, 100 clusters of raisins, and 200 cakes of figs, and loaded them on donkeys. And she said to her servants, Go on before me, see I am coming after you. But she did not tell her husband Nabal. I'm just going to interject right here. This is a woman of God who loves God, and honors those that God has called and anointed. And you know what? She doesn't pay attention to her scoundrel of a husband. She does what the Lord tells her to do. We're going to get to that in a minute. Okay. She did not tell her husband Nabal. So it was as she rode on the donkey that she went down under cover of the hill. And there were David and his men coming down toward her. And she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain I have protected all this fellow has in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that belongs to him, and he has repaid me evil for good. May God do so and more also to the enemies of David, if I leave one male of all who belong to him by morning light. Now when Abigail saw David, she dismounted quickly from the donkey, fell on her face before David and bowed down to the ground. So she fell at his feet and said, Oh, on me, my Lord, on me, let this iniquity be. And please let your maidservant speak in your ears and hear the words of your maidservant. Please let not my Lord regard this scoundrel Nabal, for as his name is so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, your maidservant, did not see the young men of my Lord whom you sent. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, since the Lord has held you back from coming to bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own hand, now let your enemies and those who seek harm for my Lord be as Nabal. And now this present which your maidservant has brought to my Lord, let it be given to the young men who follow my Lord. Please forgive the trespass of your maidservant. <laughs> wow. That's when you can truly know that you're hidden with Christ in God. It's when you can repent for family members who are evil, who are doing wrong, and take it as if it was yours and repent for them. Please forgive the trespass of your maidservant, for the Lord will certainly make for my Lord an enduring house, because my Lord fights the battles of the Lord and evil is not found in you throughout your days. Yet a man has risen to pursue you, that be King Saul, and seek your life. But <laughs> the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living with the Lord your God. And the lives of your enemies he shall sling out as from the pocket of a sling. Can I just say right now, this is a picture this is a perfect picture of our fraudulent man that's supposedly in the White House. Who knows where he really is? We hear all kinds of stories. And our real president. You know who that is. <laughs> he fights the battle of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is what she says. But the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living with the Lord your God. There is no telling how many times that through our prayers that our president has been protected from assassination. And the lives of your enemies he shall sling out 
as from the pocket of a sling. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all get that. And it shall come to pass when the Lord has done for my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you and has appointed you ruler over Israel, that this will be no grief to you, meaning that you took it into your own hands to defend yourself or to actually kill someone that offended you that this will be no grief to you nor offense of heart to my lord either that you have shed blood without cause or that my lord has avenged himself but when the lord has dealt well with my lord then remember your maid servant then david said to abigail blessed is the lord god of israel who sent you this day to meet me and blessed is your advice and blessed are you because you have kept me this day from coming to bloodshed and from avenging myself with my own hand for indeed as the Lord God of Israel lives who has kept me back from hurting you unless you had hurried and come to meet me surely by morning light no males would have been left to Nabal so David received from her hand what she had brought him and said to her, Go up in peace to your house. See, I have heeded your voice and respected your person. Now, Abigail went to Nabal, and there he was, holding a feast in his house like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunk. Therefore she told him nothing, little or much, until morning light. So it was in the morning when the wine had gone from Abel, Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became like a stone. Then it happened after about ten days that the Lord struck Nabal, and he died. So when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord who has pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal and has kept his servant from evil. For the Lord has returned the wickedness of Nabal on his own head. That is about what is going to happen shortly. The wickedness of those that have plotted to remove the man that God put in office that we voted probably by 120 million votes, he's going to be restored. So, has kept his servant from evil, for the Lord has returned the wickedness of Nabal on his own head. And David sent and proposed to Abigail to take her as his wife. When the servants of David had come to Abigail at Carmel, they spoke to her saying, David has sent us to you to ask you to become his wife. Then she arose, bowed her face to the earth, and said, Here is your maidservant, a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. So Abigail rose in haste and rode on a donkey, attended by five of her maidens, and she followed the messengers of David and became his wife. What a story. So I'm going to pick up where I left off after the story of Nabal. Nabal, when you look it up in the concordance, it comes from a Hebrew word that means dolt. <laughs> D-O-L-T. Adult. Stupid. Wicked. And, and especially impious. Also is used as the word fool, foolish man or foolish woman, a vile person. After I read, I didn't even read that whole story actually this morning. The Lord began to speak to me. I've, I've loved how he can turn off <laughs> his spirit for me to catch up with him, his words, his anointing. And then he turns it right back on like a spigot. He says, I am about to remove Nabal's from the lives 
of my sold out ones. My beloved shall be free to follow me. I say to my beloved, go forth, do my will. Go where I send you, speak what I tell you. I am your God, you will have no other. I will have my beloved controlled no longer. Be free to obey me, saith your God. I am setting my remnant free in every area of their lives. As you step out to follow me, you will have everything you need. Wow. When she stepped out to obey God, to deliver David from himself, God provided. Listen to what he goes on to say. Your finances will be delivered. Your provision will be unlocked by your, your obedience to heed my call. As your mind, will, and emotions, which is your soul, are released, your body will be set free. Burdens from man will no longer weigh you down. Years of pain will flow out of your bodies, your memories, and your hearts. Do you know that your body remembers pain? It's called body memory. I'm telling you that as a nurse. So right now in the name of Jesus, I command pain to leave and I command the memories of the pain in your body to be healed in Jesus' wonderful, matchless name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to the pains, Lord. I thank you, Father, that many of them are hearing your voice right now. They are hearing your word and they're knowing it's to them. Or they know it's to a friend and they're going to send it to them. Lord, it's not just for abused men and women in bad marriages. This is for people who have been abused and have been listening to those tape recordings in their minds. Father, from the time they were children... Maybe they were adopted and they've been abused all of their lives. Well, I'm here to tell you that Father God has sent forth his spirit of adoption. You find it in Romans 8. I believe it's verse 14. He sends forth his spirit of adoption whereby you can say Abba, Father. Abba means Daddy. God is not only our Father, he is our Daddy daddy <laughs> hallelujah i was blessed i had a wonderful daddy he called me his princess he's probably listened to every one of my videos in heaven <laughs> i've seen him there you can find that on one of my videos i think it's something like i went to heaven and i saw the saints of god Hallelujah. You need to know that God does not want you to keep those old broken records anymore. Records is something that we used to listen to in the 60s and the 70s. Hallelujah. I know. Then they came out with 8-track tape. and then they Well, that was probably in the 60s too. Then they came out with cassette recordings. And well, anyway, the rest is history. So, as your, I guess I've lost my place, so I'm going to go back. As your mind, will, and emotions, which are your soul, are released, your body will be set free. Burdens from man will no longer weigh you down. Years of pain will flow out of your bodies, your memories, and your hearts. This is why I will bring forth my Cyrus. He will set free my captives. Now, I have to go to Isaiah 45, verse 1. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus. Now, we all know this is Isaiah 45, and this applies to the 45th president. To Cyrus, whose right hand I have held 
to subdue. He has not finished this call, okay? He has not finished the call of God on his life. He's not done. Can I just tell you, he's coming back because God is going to bring him back. I don't care how many miracles it takes. God is going to get the glory. God is going to do this because we're coming into a time where Christians are about to influence every single area and the glory of God is going to fall on the earth and millions of people are going to be saved. And the reason why I'm so longing and God is so longing and God has sent us and God has sent so many prophets is to try to grow up the people of God because you've been kept suppressed. You've been kept down. Many of you have gone to churches for years where you were never allowed to do anything. Well, unless, of course, you wanted to take up the offering and maybe you could teach the little kids and, well, you could always sing in the choir. Or if you were particularly talented, you could play on in the, in the band. But I just want to tell you those days are not completely over because God is going to reestablish himself in those places where they have yielded up the control to him. I'm talking to some pastors right now. Let the Holy Ghost have control. Many of you say, well, if I let him have control, we'll have wildfire. Well, I'd have rather have a little wildfire and use it to encourage people and use it to teach people and take those people aside and, and say, look, you know, I really appreciate that you attempted to obey the Lord, but it wasn't the Lord, and this is why I know it wasn't the Lord, and give them scripture, okay? It doesn't mean you stomp out their joy. It doesn't mean you stomp out their desire to speak or their desire to be anointed and do the work of God in the church. So you guide them, you teach them. It's like letting a child make mistakes. Then if they don't make mistakes, they'll never learn. And that's what we've done to the church. Pastors, that's what many of you have done to the church and I know you meant well. But God is saying, it's time. Those days are done. Those days are over. I am raising up my remnant in the power and authority of God. And some of you are going to have to just really get with it and start reading and praying and spending more time with God instead of babysitting the people in church. Because the people that are perpetual babies in the church, are it's time for them to grow up. Why? Because the Lord wants to use every single one. I mean, we're coming into a time where it's, all hands on deck, okay? That's when the ship has been torpedoed and, and we got to patch it and we got to keep the water from coming in or we're going to all drown. Well, we're not in that shape. It's not quite in that condition. But in the present day that we're living in, the world is depending on America. So we've got to begin to pray, seek the face of God. We've got to help the church grow up, begin to be used in their gifts, pour and let the Holy Spirit pour out his anointing. I'm telling you, they're not the people that are lost right now that are hungry. They don't even know what they're hungry for. But they're going to find out when the church is filled with the Lord, they're going to realize that's what they're hungry for. Because when they see the real, they're going to... They're going to pour into your church. And if you don't have any workers who have gotten mature and who have begun to grow up, you're going to have to do all the work, and you're not going to be able to sustain it. The growth is going to be so exponential. Dear beloved pastor, let your people grow up. Let your people begin to use the gifts. Let somebody else come up and pray. And I don't mean the prayer over the offering. I'm talking about let the church come together and let them pray. Go to the fellowship hall and put chairs in a circle and just begin to pray. Give them a list of things to pray about and then begin to pray over them. Pray for President Trump. Pray that he won't be assassinated. He's not going to be assassinated in the name of Jesus because God says, I'm not done with him. Okay, I've got to get back to, listen to this. To, this is to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held to subdue nations before him and loose the armor of kings to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. That's the church. That's a picture of uh, Zion. That's a picture of the sanctuary. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I think I mentioned that earlier. So, and cut the bars of iron. 
I will give you the treasures of darkness, that's the lost souls, and hidden riches of secret places, that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, and the God of Israel, for Jacob, my servant's sake, for Israel, my elect, I have even called you by your name. I have named you, though you have not known me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God beside me. I will gird you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none besides me. That's the whole world. That there is none besides me, and I am the Lord. And there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. <laughs> I, the Lord, do all these things. Rain down, you heavens, from above. Hallelujah. That's a declaration of revival, church. Rain down from the heavens above and let the skies pour down righteousness let the earth open let them bring forth salvation let righteousness spring up together i the lord have created it there's your revival right now woe to him who strives with his maker i'm going to skip a few verses and go down to verse 11 because i really want to get to verse 13 i think it's verse 13 let's see yeah verse 13 so i'm going to 11 thus says the lord the holy one of israel and his maker, still speaking of Cyrus, ask of me, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands, you command me. I have made the earth and created man on it. I, my hands, stretched out the heavens and all their host. I have commanded. I have, raised, I have raised him up in righteousness. I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city and let my captives go free. Not for price nor reward, says the Lord of hosts. Now I'm going to finish the word the Lord gave me. Okay. So, verse 25. Oh, I have to read verse 25. I missed that. Sorry, Lord. I'm going to look to, go to verse 22. Look to the Lord and be ye saved all the ends of the earth, all you ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. He shall say, surely in the Lord I have righteousness and strength. To him men shall come, and all shall be ashamed. This is Cyrus still, who are incensed against him. Have you noticed there's been a few that have been incensed against him? And in the Lord all the descendants of Israel shall be justified and shall glory. I said, Lord, uh, okay, this is written to Israel. I can hear it right now, Lord. There's people going to say, this is written to Israel. This is all about Israel. Why are you quoting this over here in the book of Isaiah? Because everything is cyclical in the, in the Bible. Every generation gets the revelation. It has to be revealed to them. God doesn't have grandchildren. Do you understand? You have them, and God's promised to save them and your great-grandchildren. But he doesn't have grandchildren. He only has children. Okay? So every generation has to have a fresh revelation. It's called new wine skins. It's called new wine. Every single one of them. Okay? So he says, we are the seed of Israel. Verse 25, it says, I'm going to read it again. Well, I lost my place already. I'm so sorry. I'll go back. In the Lord, all the descendants of Israel shall be justified and shall glory. Okay, so listen to this. Romans 4, 13 through 17. For the promise that he would be heir, talking about Abraham, of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, because the law was not given. When Abraham obeyed God and came out of the Ur of the Chaldees, the law had not been given. That did not happen until many, many years later. Hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of years later. Okay, 400 exactly. And it says uh, that the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. 
For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of no effect, because the law brings about wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of faith, uh, the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, not just the Jewish nation. And in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Now I'm going to read verse 20 through 25. He did not waver, speaking of Abraham. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. And being convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Hallelujah. Believe the promises he has spoken to you, church. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. God is bringing us to a place of rest like we have never known. It is not a physical rest, but a place of deep spiritual rest. The rest, the Lord told me, he said, the rest is in me, says the Lord. The spheres of influence over our individual lives that the church has relinquished to the devil is about to be brought down. This is Babylon. I mentioned this in the last video. Babylon is fallen. I'm telling you, it's not going to. In the spirit realm, it's already complete. Babylon has already fallen. And you know what? This is Cyrus's job. And Cyrus is already back in office. I'm telling you, the Lord is saying this over and over and over again because he's going to fulfill the word of his prophets. Hear me. The Lord is going to fulfill the word of his prophets. Stop believing that. You know, they say, well, there are no prophets today, but they call us false prophets. Well, you know what's really funny about that? You can't have false prophets without having true prophets. Do you hear me? Listen, beloved. 70% of the younger generation in America believe in the devil but only 60% believe in God well you know what God is about to reveal himself through his remnant because we're going to arise and shine we're going to be set on fire of the Holy Spirit the fire of God is going to fall on us everything in our lives that is not pure will be burned up we will suffer loss if we don't yield up everything to him but praise god those who have yielded everything to him are going to be set on fire and we're going to be like firebrands plucked out of the fire and we're going to go set fires everywhere we go i'm talking about spiritual fires i'm talking about the fire of the holy ghost that came on the day of pentecost and they stood up with boldness hallelujah the boldness of God came on them again in Acts 4 toward the end of the chapter after they had been uh, uh, put in prison and they had been uh, uh, mocked and ridiculed and told not to preach anymore in that name, the name of Jesus. But they recognized that they were unlearned men and that they had been with Jesus. People are going to begin to know who we are because we're going to be full of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm getting... A really warm out here so I'm going to close this right now Cyrus's job okay is to see that Babylon falls Babylon is going to be in every sphere every sphere of our culture 
and actually in the world. After America gets cleansed, then we're after the whole world. Praise God. All right. Why do we need Cyrus? You say. Because he will let the remnant arise. He is going to take the financial burden off of the people's backs that has been breaking our back. We are taxed to death. That was what the Boston Tea Party was about. That was why we made, they made America, they built America to get away from the taxation without representation. And we don't have representation with devoting, with Dominion voting machines. They just decide. It's all coming down. You know what I love? The Lord revealed to me one day, and I know you is no great revelation to you, but he actually says he has dominion over everything. That means he has dominion over dominion. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Glory to God. All right. He's going to allow the remnant to arise, and we are going to take back the land, and then the nations, and God is going to set the children free. I'm talking about the little children. I'm talking about the sex traffic children. There are millions of them. I want to read one more scripture, if you'll forgive me. I know this is getting too long. Those of you that love me and I love you so much, say, hey, we don't care how long it is. <laughs> it just flies by. I hope this one's flying by. In Luke, the 19th chapter, this is the story about uh, Jesus tells uh, in the 12th verse, he tells about a certain nobleman. This Luke 19, 12, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So he called 10 of his servants and delivered to them 10 minas. Now, a mina was each worth about a three months salary. And he said to them, do business till I come. I don't like the King James in that because actually he doesn't say do business till I come. He says occupy. Occupy is actually a term that is used once we have taken a ridge like in a war and we've been fighting and we have routed the enemy and now we're occupying that space. It doesn't mean we're actually we're actually fighting because you see Jesus has already fought. He's already won the battle. All we got to do is enforce what he has already done, church. Start believing it. Start believing that he's already done what he said we can do. When you realize all you're doing is enforcing it, that you're just speaking the words of heaven. You're just speaking the word of the Lord. New King James, Passion Translation. I don't care. Speak it. Speak it. Oh, I know I'll hear from some of you about that. Get over your religious self. <laughs> I love you anyway. <laughs> you see, there are people out there that do not speak King James English. And they do not understand. And they probably have more tattoos than you ever dreamed. They have all kinds of things that are wrong with them. They need the word of the Lord that's going to speak to them. God is able to get through to them by the Spirit. And occupy means we're going to take that ground and keep it. We're not letting the devil have any more territory. We're going to, by the power of Almighty God, we're going to take back what was ours to begin with. The Lord gave Adam dominion over the earth. And of course, we know that because the devil caused him to sin by tricking Eve and then him loving Eve so much, he thought, well, I don't want her to go without me and to sin. I'm going to go with her. I don't know what he thought. But you know what, church? I'm here to tell you that the Lord has restored us. It has already been done. It's already all been done. The gavel has already come down in heaven. And the Lord has already 
declared and decreed what's going to happen. All we have to do is enforce it. Amen? That means we're going to, I'm sweating. That means we're just going to have to occupy. Hallelujah. Occupy until I come. You can read the rest of the story. It's a beautiful story. The guy who hid his mina in the dirt, buried it. He had his taken away from him and given to the guy that did something with his. That, that, that sort of flies in the face of the person that says, well, we're, we're, oh, there's just nothing but bad about to happen and Jesus is just coming any minute and, and what do we care if all these people are going to hell? That's the apostasy. No, it isn't the apostasy. They're the apostasy. What do you mean, Deborah? What are you talking about? The apostates are people who have fallen away from the Lord. You say, well, I haven't fallen away from the Lord. You've fallen away from his his order, his edict, what he wants us to do. The apostasy isn't out there in the world. They're sinners. The apostasy is inside the church, beloved. The church is where the apostasy is. The sinners are doing what sinners have always done. The Lord wants to save sinners. I don't know about you, but my Bible says in John 3, 16 that he wants to save the whole world. That whole section of scripture from verse 6, John 3, 16, all the way through the end of the chapter. The Lord is wanting us to be light and salt to all the earth. Beloved, wake up. Realize that the apostasy are those who don't believe in the word of the Lord and that we have any authority. Then what are we doing? What have we ever done if we're just supposed to take a, our little group and run to the hills and get ready to survive the onslaught? Dear God, help us. Awaken, church. Babylon has fallen. Babylon has already fallen. You just haven't seen the results of it yet. The Babylon of the, in the economy, the Babylon in the media, the Babylon in the education system, the, the all of the, the government, the Babylon, what has been taken over by the spirit of Baal, Baal worshipers, Luciferians, those who have taken over the money system, the economy of the world, the cabal is coming down. God is bringing it down because he wants the children of God to grow up and preach the gospel and bring in this end time harvest. Well, I've gone almost an hour. I've said lots more than I planned on saying. Seems like I always do. I'm all the time getting in trouble. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> Oh, I love you, and I am really hot out here. Let me just see, what is the temperature? I know y'all love to hear this. See, I'm I'm like, you know what? It. Oh gosh, you're not gonna believe this. Ninety degrees. Wow. Well, love you guys. I really, really love you guys. I love reading your letters. I weep over them. Do you know that every single email and every single letter, when we get it, we pray. If there's a need in it, we pray over it. I also want to just mention that we're going to have help with our mail. When we go out on the road, there is no way we can do it all. So, I just want you to know, okay? And if you get, get something that's been printed out, well, yeah, I wrote it and I printed it. But I can't, I just can't sign them all anymore. There are too many. And I love you and I thank you for that. And I bless you in the name of Jesus. And I, Jesus, and I just, I pray right now that your every need will be met. I encourage you to obey the Lord with all of your heart. In Jesus' name. Bye for now.